Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to our Unity RPG tutorial series. Now, in the last episode, we added little enemy guys for our player to walk into and bump against and uh, get, well, basically just get killed every time you walk into them. Um, game resets, and that's all fine and dandy. But we need to be able to do some actual damage to these guys. Uh, so, we're going to need to give our player a weapon. So, I... Uh, in the in the description down below in the same place you will get all the other uh, art resources for this game there'll be a new uh, weapons image which will be just here so we're going to drag that into our art folder here same as we've done with everything else pop that in there and you'll see when you look at it there's a few different weapons but for now we're only going to use one but like I said there's a few different weapons there so we need to separate this out so much like we've done with all our other ones we need to set our pixels per unit to 16 the exact same set the sprite mode to multiple um, we don't need to generate my maps uh, turn out the point uh, it's really small it's 32 by 32 so we'll select the smallest max size there and set that to true color and we hit apply um, and if you don't know what generate move maps are, you don't really need to worry about it. It's just something that is used uh, for making uh, mostly with 3D stuff. So you don't even really need to worry about it. You can just turn it off and it doesn't really matter too much. Uh, but we've got all these items. Uh, rather than going through and drawing them all by ourselves, we'll automatically slice it up. So we'll hit slice. And we'll see that it creates a whole load of boxes for our around our different objects and breaks them all down for us. And we could go true and I suppose it probably would be best to um, give them all a bit of a name so we'll just call this sword one actually for now I won't go through and name them all but just just to distinguish some of them I'll just make these sword one two and three and we'll hit apply and obviously we've got a shield we've got these little knives and we've got some axes and they're different colors I suppose to be different upgraded versions of weapons again stuff we'll uh, focus on in the future but for now we just need to get the basic um, sword on our player so if we're gonna have these things be upgradable um, actually we need to just go back into them for a second if we want to have these be upgradable we basically want to play to be able to switch between them in the game so we want our player say with this sword here we want it to be able to be switched out for this one and this one and if we have our player walking around we want our sword at a certain point part of his body for example we want him to be holding the sword in his hand so what we want is to make sure that the pivot point which is the point where the sword rotates and stuff like that will be down at the hand here so that if we replace that for say a knife if we put the pivot point down here wherever it moves it'll always move by where the player's grabbing the, the handle and the same with his axe here we might want it a little bit higher maybe a little bit up here or something and um, something like that so what we want to do is grab the little center point here and put that roughly to the middle of the handle will be roughly about right and we'll do the same with these other ones here and that's what we're going to be using them just yet um, but we do that and we hit apply again so now we'll see just for an example if we just pop this open and scroll down to where our weapon sword is that's these ones here just drag him into the world like this uh, we'll just go back to our scene where does our sword go it's here oh we can't see it because it's behind the layers uh, so we want to set the sorting layer of this to we want to set it to the player and we want it to be above the player like that So now if we just grab the rotate thing here, we we'll see that the center of the rotation is on the center of the of the sword. So we can just go swing, swing, swing like that. If we want to give it some kind of swing and animation. Um, but for now, before we start adding animation and stuff, we just want to do a very basic little script to do damage to our enemies. The same way we just set up a basic script for the enemies to hurt the player, we're going to set up a basic script to just make this sword kill the enemies. So what we'll do is we'll add a box collider around the sword, much like we did with the enemies for hurting the player. So we'll say box collider 2D. And we'll make sure it is a trigger. But obviously that box is too big, so we're going to make that a little bit smaller. We're going to set the Y height a little bit smaller and then move the Y offset up a bit like this. So that we get it up there. 
and we'll pull in the width just a little bit as well. We want to leave it a little bit over because you always want to leave just a little bit over for when you're doing damage just so the player doesn't like accidentally miss and uh, get annoyed. Um, so yeah, so that's fine. So now we obviously we're going to need a script to uh, do some damage to our enemies. So we're going to create a new C sharp script that we're going to call uh, just hurt enemy. Enemy, if I can spell it. Okay, and we'll open this up in Mono Develop. Okay, so once we have that open here, um, this is going to be very, very straightforward. So, like, pretty much uh, similar to what we did for hurting the uh, player, um, we're going to say if. Actually, let me just uh, open that one up to make sure. I'm just having a, a bit of a. Where is. Yeah, there's slime controller, wasn't it? Uh, and it does it by the object name. Yeah, we didn't use tags, which is what we're going to use for these guys. So basically, what we're going to say is, much like we did, we got the name of the player. This time, we're going to say if other dot game object dot the dot tag equals enemy. And the reason we want to use a tag. Is because what we can do is tag all of our enemies with the name enemy but uh, as we can see even just looking at our project hierarchy here all these slimes in the world only the original one here is just called slime red the rest all have these numbers added on to them so we wouldn't want to do uh, if other game object dot name equals slime red because then it would only get this guy and obviously we're going to have more enemies in the game than just these five little fellas so we want to make sure that all our enemies can be um uh can be hurt when we want to do damage to them so uh also i just realized i put this in the update loop which is exactly the wrong place for this so i'm just gonna control and x that and below the update after our the, up, the update from the closing bracket of the update loop we're going to say here uh, void on trigger enter 2d and we're going to say collider 2d other so this so as we've covered before what they'll do is when a trigger when something moves into the trigger box which will be on our sword um, it'll say say okay what collider is this that walk into the trigger box and then if we paste back in what we had written before, now we have if the other that walked into the box, game object and the tag of that game object is enemy. If that's the case, then just destroy other dot game object. Because for now, we just want to keep it nice and simple and it just destroys the enemies as soon as it um, encounters them obviously so in the future we'll, we'll build a health system and we'll be doing certain amounts of damage whenever we hit an enemy but for now we want to keep it nice and simple and just uh, have our sword kill the enemy as soon as it touches them so we're going to save that and we're going to go back in here and now like i said we want our slimes to have oh no we've got a problem here uh on line 18 oh that should be two equals it should be if other that game object that tag equals equals because if when you're doing an if check like this when you want to check something is equal to something when you want to check that something is equal you have to put two equals but when you want to set something to be equal then you put one so we don't want to set our game object tag to be enemy that that would just be wrong so uh, just say that again go back in here and this time we should be okay yeah we've no errors this time okay so what we want to do then is on all our slime guys we want to give them the tag enemy and I don't think we have used the tag yet haven't we no um, so basically all we have to do is we, much like we did with uh, layers and stuff we can if you go to tag here um, there's a bunch of like default tags that are set into the game and you can easily add a new tag so say you wanted to add a tag for I don't know, uh, cars or something like that in your own game, I don't know. Um, it's very easy, just hit the plus symbol here and you can add a new tag like that. But we'll get rid of that for now. But like I said, by default there's a few already included. So if we hit tag here, there's a, a player one, 
and oh, there isn't an enemy one for some reason. <laughs> for some reason, I thought it said there was an enemy one by default. So we need to add that tag. So we'll click on the plus, and it type in enemy here. And of course, we want to make sure that's spelled the exact same way and with the same capital letters as we've used in our script, uh, which isn't too hard to do. It's a very short little word. Um, but now, if we go back to our slime, and if we hold Control and select all the other slimes at the same time, we go back to tag and we hit enemy like that. Um, we should, uh, yeah, they should all be marked as enemies. So now, if we find our sword, which we're going to rename from just being weapon sword, we'll just call this sword. Um, if we hit play, obviously at the moment the tag, the sword is not attached to the player or anything like that. So we're just going to switch back to scene here. And if we bring it over near one of these guys, we should. Or maybe not. Why is that not? Oh, we haven't given it the script. Of course, it's not going to do anything unless we actually give it a script. So we need to attach the heart enemy script to it. Like that. There we go. I was very confused there for a second. Uh, but now, we should see... We go over here. Now, if we put the sword near any of the enemies, it immediately kills them. Like that. So, so that's okay. That's perfect. Uh, but, obviously, we need to uh, have the sword be attached to our player. So, what we will do is just go and drag our sword object on top of the player, and that makes it a child of the player. And what that means is it'll follow uh, the player object around in the world. So if we just hit play now, obviously the sword is kind of up here to the side of where the player is. But in the game, now we have the sword in the same position relative to where the player is. So we can use the sword in a rather strange way to kill our enemies, which is not really uh, how we want to do it. So let's just, um, I'm just going to drag the player up here away from the camera there for a second. And we'll just move the sword into a basic kind of position like this. But what we'll see now is the sword just stays in the same position the whole time. So what we're going to need to do is add um, animations to the sword. Because at the moment it's just kind of standing there. We want it to move around with the player's hand. We'll add attack animations and stuff like that in, in the future. But for now we just want it to be able to... Um, we want a basic animation for the player to be able to just walk along and hit into our enemies with. So, that's what we're going to cover in the next episode. Uh, but for now we have got our sword functioning. It's just looking a bit weird on the player. So next time out we're going to add, make sure it looks a little bit better and a little bit more interesting for the player as you're walking around. So thanks for watching and I'll see you all very soon. Thanks for checking out this episode and if you want even more Games Plus James goodness make sure you hit those subscribe and like buttons. You can also find me on Twitter and Facebook by following the links on screen where you can find out all the latest news about the channel. And if you want to help support the show check out the Patreon page where you can get exclusive content in return for helping make the channel even better. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more.